Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Asim Karim, and you're watching my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about H.M. Naqvi's second novel, The Selected Works of Abdullah Dakhbazak. My aim is to give a critical introduction of this amazing novel. The novel was published in 2019, but there is a lack of substantial debate on it. I aim to highlight some key areas for further debates and analysis. Let's proceed to the discussion. Simply oh boy, speaking, first the novel is a magnificent was work published in 2010. So it has unprecedented thematic fluidity get this beautiful work of and the text moves between different concepts. The novel is remarkable for its thematic fluid fluidity. The novel remarkable is remarkable for its stylistic innovations, humor, characterization, refined structural innovations, and innovations in the use of language, especially English. In all these areas, the novel, the novel is known for its hilarious humor outlook. and characterization, it is going to historiography, be and in writing, contemporary fiction in Pakistan. Please check out this, check out this introduction, introduction to the presentation and introduction to the novel, in fact, and try to find again the flow of really thought for fluidity and the key areas and the key which I am to talk which I about to highlight in, in the next presentation slides. today. I will talk My about point four areas in the discussion. Text. First, urbanity. This novel are related to urbanity, a description Two, of second, urban humor, life. Third, historiography. Humor and historiography, four, stylistic and stylistic innovation. At the end of each point, I would like to. I will talk about four areas in the text. Highlight and highlight. First, urbanity. Some theoretical issues for further debates. Second, humor. And third, analysis. historiography. In narrating Karachi, or in narrating the urban life of Karachi, Nakvi draws attention to a host of issues which are typical to mega cities like Karachi. On the top of the list is speciality. Nakvi is in love with the vastness of the city and playably narrates how its space and population exceeds many European countries. Then he writes about diversity in population with emphasis on the religious minorities, especially their role in supporting the city's music culture. Nakwi gives space to description of residential, religious, and commercial structures. Each one of them carry, carries a symbolic value. Nakwi takes great pain to write about religious rigidities and the way people behave in religious matters. He constructs a parallel position between the shrine and life on the street. At the shrine, you see an atmosphere of tolerance and acceptance and respect for others. People from different faiths and backgrounds visit the shrine to pray and participate in Ur celebration. On the street, people demonstrate a different kind of attitude. Here people demonstrate a kind of religious rigidity in matters of religious duties. For instance, Nakvi narrates a roadside debate between the religious minded people and Abdullah about fasting and not fasting in the holy month of Ramzan. The episode clearly demonstrates how people are ready to impose their thoughts on others, especially in matters of religion, and unwilling to listen to counter arguments. Nakwi also spends a great deal of time in narrating Karachi food street culture. Finally, Nakvi construct the past and present of Karachi, especially 
how Karachi has moved from a cosmopolitan city in the past to a culture of intolerance and crime in the present. The description of urban Karachi draws our, draws our attention to a host of broad debates concerning urbanization. It invites debates concerning colonial urbanization and global urban studies. In this respect, Karachi makes an interesting comparison with the Indian city of Bombay. While, while, while Bombay is an invention of colonialism, Karachi existed before colonization. Hence, it carries the indigenous legacy of geographic and demographic growth and expansion. It invites us to see how colonialism defined and shaped urban construction in South Asia. How do cities like Karachi address global views on urbanization? Does the urbanization of Karachi address the concept, concept of modern urban development studies? What limitations have pushed the growth of cities like Karachi to urban chaos? Nakwi also tends to highlight areas where urban development has faltered in Karachi. In the first place, Karachi is more or less an extension of the empire because it has remained under the control of the local elitism after independence. Hence, the concept of democracy in urban centers like Karachi has been seriously undermined. Secondly, Karachi is an excellent example of lousy governance. In one of the descriptions, Nakwi humorously described post rainy road conditions in Karachi. We speak of corruption and mismanagement at the highest level. Nakwi also writes about the prevalence of colonial laws and how these laws, these laws in independent Pakistan have strengthened the control of elite classes in the city. Hanif also expands on the urbanity theme by bringing descriptions of Karachi food. His emphasis is on describing indigenous food and cuisine culture. The subcontinent has a history of cuisine, which is not a product of the cultural expression of the empire. Nakvi lovingly describes different foods and shares a number of recipes. At one level, he connects Karachi food culture with the Mughals, how Mughals supported the spread of dish like pulao in Pakistan or in subcontinent. At another level, he delves into the luxurious and mouth-watering depiction of Pakistani food variety, especially chicken curry. The representation invites us to connect national culture with the urban cuisine taste and foods. It also invites us to think about our food street culture as an essential attribute of urban, commercial, and aesthetic traits simultaneously. In brief, urban life of Karachi invites the reader to the following key areas of debate. It invites further debate along the dynamics of urban literature, the qualities, the characteristic of urban literature, and how it differs from the conventional 
uh, description of the idyllic life or suburban life or life of nature. How and where does the urban landscape of Karachi interplay with the cultural, historical, political, and psychological factors of an ever-growing population? It gives rise to discussion of urban culture independently and in comparison to the literary depiction of mega cities and their culture. For instance, how demographic growth of mega cities different, differently represent the division of residential and commercial areas and slums. It also invites the reader to debate how the presence of various structures like re religious sites mosques or shrines, malls, commercial areas, and underworld criminal network communicate different cultural expressions of a city. Next point of discussion is humor. Humor, as we know, is an essential attribute of the human condition. And literature has given ample space to it and wide representation of humorous description with various purposes of reformation, entertainment, and laughter. However, there has been a lack of consistent, consistent interpretation of humor from theoretical standpoints, especially in South Asian and Pakistani English literature. This context makes it very important to interpret humor in the novel under discussion. Broadly, humor is not alien to Pakistani literary culture, but the post 9-11 political imbalance through religious radicalism has pushed it to the peripheries. Nakvi revives it strongly. For the first time, Humor in the novel helps us breathe in a culture where the 9-11 tragedy does not overwhelm our cultural and political expressions. There is no talk of war and post-war cultural debacle. It is simply an experience of hilarity. It is not satirical, so there is no moral reformation desire in it. It is not based upon the mockery of others. It is pure fun, laughter inducing and harmless to the moral sense of a moralist. Nakwi's humor in the novel falls within the domain of relief and incongruous theories of humor. Categories where best literary representation falls typically. Relief theory of humor posits that humor is the release of nervous energy. And in many cases, relief may involve a cognitive release from anxiety or a physical release of tension. Incongruity, on the other hand, denotes a humor that is related to revealing a condition of disparity between different human attitudes and actions. It aims to emphasize that people laugh at things that surprise them and at things that violate an accepted pattern of behavior. In the novel, humor appears to be related to both relief and incongruity models, as said earlier. Its, its purpose appears to bring laughter through bold, robust, funny descriptions, irony, and humorous characters. The bulk of humor in this novel is strongly related to the literary creation of Abdullah. a figure capable of paralleling the best humorous portraits in world literature. To me, Abdullah is 
bearing in an intelligent resemblance with Shakespeare's Sir John Falstaff. Importantly, now as, as humor, humor springs, springs from Abdullah's personality, mainly from Abdullah, it is not targeted at hence it is not targeted at, at, the cost of of public at the cost of others. others. In that case, it springs mainly it from a wide part of the novel. Between his age, his attitude, as Nuk, we have created his, a character his capable of laughing at himself, adhering to the city, the big another funny thing in his own character. Again, mainly important from a wide distance brings from the last personality. His attitude, it is not targeted at his at desire to enjoy life. laughter at the, the cost of possible limit and others. The result is laughter and nothing it else. It springs mainly from a wide description. Simply, the representation of humor in the novel is very significant, and there are a number of reasons for that. First, humor in the text draws us away from the presence of political material in contemporary Pakistani narrative. Secondly, it invites us to debate humor in the novel in comparison to South Asian literature of the post-colonial or post-modern nature and how the presence of humor is different in this novel. Third, it invites us to debate humor along the established theoretical framework concerning comedy and culture. My next point of... My next point of discussion is related to historiography in the novel. In the first place, the novel under discussion is not a historical fiction. Still, history is integral to the text. There are crude references, for example, to the rise of schisms in the early days of Islamic State of Medina. Likewise, uh, Nakbi finds the clues to religious rigidities in Karachi in the increase of specific ideologies in the Middle East. For more on this, you can check out my article. Nakbi's attitude to history in this way blend of dynamic and conventional methods. It is dynamic because he sees the present deeply connected with the past and the past shaping the present in endless ways of defining people's attitude, beliefs and practices. But it is also conventional because he, is, he narrates history with the conventional mechanism of growth of history from past to the present in a fixed pattern. Events seem to originate from the past and continue to impact the present ever growingly. A few words about stylistic innovation. The text is thoroughly postmodern in here. It is postmodern because of a unique narrative structure that splits the content between the main text and additional information in the footnote or glossary. For the beginner, it might be, might be challenging to follow the textual flow. Once you get accustomed to it, you start enjoying it. Significantly, this style erodes the border between fiction and a research project. We usually use footnotes in a research project like thesis or book. But Nucky makes an extensive use of it in the novel. Simply, it is a fantastic structural innovation. However, the footnotes are a part of the fictional narrative and mostly they carry the same fictional element. 
The second stylistic innovativeness is a consistent blending of Punjabi, Urdu and English idioms, slangs and proverbs. The mixing is a regular part of the narrative in chapter after chapter. In this way, he takes Pinglish to an unprecedented level in fiction, making it a source of decentry English and making the reading process pure fun and enjoyment. The novel is a feast for the social linguist, in fact. In conclusion, the novel is an endless source of entertainment, player, and social discourses. It is a must read for advanced students and invites us to redefine Pakistani English fiction in a way open to interpretation along multiple threads of thoughts and not limit to ideologies or discourses in the post 9-11 context. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos and lectures. Thanks again.